And I think one of the higher forms of consciousness is to be able to feel the emotions we want to feel when we want to feel them. And we have this capacity as human beings. It's more readily available now than ever before. It doesn't mean that we won't feel sad sometimes, or that we won't feel angry, or that we won't feel disappointed. But we can learn how to then make choices when we're feeling, say, disappointed, and shift those emotions in a way that put us back in a place that's more productive. It's kind of like diet. We choose what food we want to eat. And we put more emphasis on that than ever before many people do because we know what certain foods do or don't do to our bodies. But we have this emotional diet, which means the emotions that we have running through our system all the time that we just take for granted is that they're there. We can't do anything about them. They're only reactions. In the new new consciousness, we don't see it that way. We say, wait a minute, I can stop certain emotions. I can engage in certain emotions. I can begin to paint the picture of life consciously with the emotions that I want to choose and not just be a victim of emotion. This is all part of the newness that's coming in now with the shift. It's that's part of the evolution of the human species. There's a greater ability to utilize our emotions. And that's the difference. And it's a big difference in many ways, but it's not as hard as it sounds. Do you think that people can utilize the, the precognitive properties that you mentioned before, meaning that we can, if you will, embrace ourselves when we're confronted with something uh, uh, uncomfortable? Yeah, we certainly can. I think that one of the ways to use it is to prepare for things. We call it simply PREP, P-R-E-P, for those international people around the world, PREP. Prepping is really powerful. It's a very, it sounds very simple, but when you begin to apply it, it becomes a really powerful tool. That means this. You mentioned earlier that we are producing, you know, I mentioned and you asked me about it, the energetic field produced by the heart. So we're constantly producing an energetic field, an energetic field environment. And that field environment does change depending upon what we are feeling emotionally. And we do this 24 hours a day for our entire lives. So if we learn that we are creating our own field environment, and we are going to be in, let's say, a meeting that we could be challenging. We have to, to have a, a conversation with someone that we know could be difficult. What if we prepare for that by really going in our heart first, finding some compassion for the people we're going to be communicating with, some extra care, some appreciation for ourselves, and we prepare our own field environment before we engage within that context of that meeting or that conversation? What that does is it sets up a different opportunity for something good to occur. It doesn't mean it always will. Things could go the opposite direction. But we are preparing ourselves so that we are maintaining our own internal balance, conserving our energy, and doing what we can to create a field environment that will produce a good outcome. And prepping also gets into things, I mean, for me personally, I know my own mechanical reactions. I know certain things that will, use an American term, push my buttons. I know these things. They're not a mystery to me. If I know I'm going into a meeting that could be challenging, I can consciously prep to say to myself, I am going to be in a place now where I'm not going to react the same old way. I've done this a thousand times. It doesn't work. I'm not going to do it this time. I'm going to use the power of my heart to arrest those things before they get me. I'm going to put out more care and appreciation in the face of whatever comes my way. That is using the core power of the heart, the intelligence of the heart, to regulate emotions and create a field environment that produces a higher chance for a a positive outcome. You mentioned uh, a new consciousness before. Uh, What does that mean? Where where is this coming from, uh, Howard? Well, it's coming from generically what would be called the universal source, you know, the energetic forces that have been guiding this planet, you know, for billions of years. And it's all part of a natural evolutionary process. The way I look at it is it's a dimensional shift. And dimension in this context does not mean a physical location. It's a range of consciousness. We've been operating now uh, primarily for in third dimensional consciousness for two or three thousand years. And that consciousness is not bad. It's produced a lot of great results. But it is a duality. It's a good, bad, right, and wrong. It's survival mentality. It's look out for yourself. It's a lot of things. Um, Now we're moving into the fourth dimensional consciousness. And it's not 
just into the fourth, it's into the higher range of the fourth. So we're really in the process right now of making a dimensional shift of one and a half dimensions. And it's happening very, very quickly. And people all around the world where I speak, and I speak in Europe and United States and Asia, they, they generically call it the shift. Everybody's experiencing the shift in one way or another now. It's this major shift in consciousness. And it's causing a lot of uh, stress because the old is moving out while the new is trying to come in. And a lot of times, it's, anytime you see that much change, it's always stressful. And so this dimensional shift is bringing in a new consciousness that's going to give us new capacities as human beings. It's going to give us, for example, a greater ability to make emotional choices. It's also going to lead, ultimately, to greater harmony, cooperation, more peace in the world, the intelligence we need to solve problems like uh, global warming and things that we know are, are going to be issues in the future. It's a new intelligence we absolutely have to have in order to, uh, to, to survive as a, as a species on planet Earth. The good news is, is it's coming in now, and it's accessible to people, uh, but it's also a challenging time for people. So what do you think some of the, if you will, signatures of, of, of this will be? Will, will, will everybody move into this, willing or not? Or, or will some, uh, you know, <laughs> upgrade, if we can use that word then, and, and some not? What do you think about that, Howard? It's going to be down to people's choices, and you're right about that. We are a planet of choice, and some people will choose to move on into the next, and some won't. Um, some people will try to hang on to the old while the new's coming in, and just is not going to work. Uh, the characteristics of it can be many things. One of the things that I'm already seeing take place now is that, you know, ambition, just raw, aggressive ambition, does not seem to be producing the same positive results that it has produced in the past. It seems to be creating, in many cases, an opposite result. It's not working like it used to. Cooperation and coming together is working a lot more than individual ambition. I'm already seeing the signs of that everywhere that I go. That's just one example. Another example might be that for thousands of years, the people that have sort of approached life from a more caring place, a more, you know, open-hearted place, often seem to come out, you know, they don't seem to be respected. They look at as weak. Uh, that's changing. Uh, now people that are, have this type of character and this principle and this integrity about them are beginning to be recognized more for that. And there are many things that are going to happen. I get asked in, in media interviews, to describe well, what is this new dimension going to be like and my answer to that is to be honest I don't know and the reason I don't know is because it's completely new and our tendency when we when we talk about new is we try to see new from where we are today in other words we try to put new clothes on what we already see and what we're moving into now is something we haven't ever seen before it would be like someone coming up to a person let's say in the 1800s, who's sitting on a horse and buggy and saying to them, there's going to be new transportation in the future. And if the person on the horse and buggy was trying to figure that out, they probably would be seeing a better horse and a better buggy. But they wouldn't be seeing the airline industry because they couldn't. And that's the exciting position we're in today. It's going to be so different and so new that we really can't see it yet. So my approach is take it day to day, moment to moment, put out more love, put out more care, do what I can to continue to improve myself and stay in alignment with my higher principle, and then help others. And let the rest of it unfold. I don't uh, spend a lot of time worrying about or trying to figure out the future. I try to just stay in the flow with what's going on in my moment to moment, day to day, because it is big. And your your question is like, is it going to shift? Um, are people all going to shift? Well, not necessarily, but the shift is happening anyway. It's not just about us. It's about the entire planet. It's about the solar system. It's about things that are even larger than our solar system. It's a universal shift that's occurring. We're just a part of it, hmm. and so people will either move along or they won't. But we're uh, just one part of something that's, that's much much larger than than we are. Could this be also creating some uh, havoc, if we put it that way, then? If, I mean, if we connect this with the Global Coher Coherence uh, Initiative, some of the research that you've done in terms of uh, the, the magnetic field of the Earth, and, and basically, uh, do you think that the effects here, uh, th this rather will affect our, um, you know, our collective emotions, will affect Earth in different ways? Could we talk about 
uh, weather patterns? Can we talk about uh, other things? We're in the realm of uh, Wilhelm Reich almost here now, but uh, any comments on that, Howard? 